Oops. Madam Chair, happy birthday to you, oh. members of the school board. <laughs> Thank you. wonderful to see you. Thank you so much for having us here this evening for this opportunity. And wow, where does a principal begin when asked to think of uh, something to highlight before the school board? Because I know you know there are so many wonderful and exciting things happening in all of our schools and certainly at Matoke Elementary School. I'm proud this evening to be joined by some human friends, but also some non-human friends. And we thought it would be apropos to share with you something that we know is near and dear to your hearts and we appreciate the funding. My friend to the right hopefully will be happy with me as well uh, for your support over the years with instructional technology. So this evening I have brought some of my younger friends and, well, they're all younger, um, <laughs> even my teacher. Um, and we've got some technological help this evening tonight. We hope that we give you a, a brief glimpse of what's going on with some of the instructional technology at the elementary level that we're using. So I'll let my friends take over from there. Hello, our names are Michelle Zhou and Frances Smith. Today, we will be talking about our time of being Matoka Elementary School's paparazzi. This is what we call ourselves, but officially we are the student reporters who write articles for our school website. We noticed all the new web posts on Matoka's homepage and wondered how the posts were chosen. We spoke to Mrs. Saito, who manages our school website, and asked if we could write posts too. She agreed to let us run with us. Here are how technology tools help make this possible. First, we pitch an idea or topic that has to be approved using Office 365. Office 365 is basically a mix of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneDrive, Sway, Teams, and OneNote. Office 365 is a very popular software throughout the fifth grade because it has perks like saving automatically. And you can also send it to friends for advice. Teachers can also comment on papers and PowerPoints as well. For student reporters, Office 365 made the whole process easier because we can chat and edit at the same time. We can work from home, school, and continue where we left off. We can access the file from any place that has a browser. We used our iPods and devices to take the photos. After we went on our photo binge, we typed two to three paragraphs, and it's quick, but thorough and quite enjoyable. After we are finished, we send it through Office 365 to Miss Saito to finalize the article. When she's done with that, then anyone who looks at our school website can see our masterpiece. Now, we would like to share a video of other fun activities using technology at Matoka. So I think technology with differentiation makes things possible today that years ago, I think we wouldn't have seen such a huge growth within a school year for certain students that are falling behind or just don't have that prior knowledge before they get to fourth grade. Um, programs like Prodigy, IXL, in the lower grade, Streambox, all of these things are great tools to work with students at their level, which only helps them increase that foundational knowledge so that they can keep rising and keep meeting those expectations. Students are able to access information, you know, in a snap, you know, something that they can't do in every textbook or every library book doesn't have the most up-to-date information about a subject. I think even with like our paper technology that we have now, like with the Scholastic News, like the kids can access their Scholastic News online and they can read it from home if they accidentally lose their magazine. They can see the different videos to help them relate. They can make those connections. I mean, there are things happening around the world that they don't really understand, but then they get onto Scholastic News or News ELA and they are able to connect on a student level with those things and yeah. see and hear and really kind of buy into that topic. I think that's really important. In the library, we use technology every day and it looks very different than it did five, 10, or 20 years ago. We still do a lot of research electronically and students need to have the skills to navigate those resources, but we also use technology quite a bit for helping develop soft skills. Students need to be able to collaborate and create together. They need to be able to persevere with challenges that they face and uh, the technology that we have today is changing so rapidly that they, they really need to have those skills to be able to take anything and figure out how it works and figure out how to make it work for them. I think one of the things I've always heard is if you walk into a classroom 
you know, in the 1800s versus a classroom in the 1900s, there would be no change. But I think if you walk into a classroom now, you're going to see that engagement, you're going to see that collaboration, you're going to see this 21st century skills that these students are, it's almost becoming second nature for them to, which is great to use those resources that they have and to be able to find answers to questions that before would take hours. Hello, I would like to thank you for this time. My name is JP Alexander. Today I'm here with Josiah Walston and Aaliyah Savage. We are here to share how technology, specifically robots, <laughs> are used to help us learn at our amazing school, Matoka. We are grateful to have two types of robots that are used in the, in the upper grades at Matoka. The younger grades have to use the cute dash and dot and B-bots, bee, bee but we use the Spiros and Autobots. These robots are used with iPods, iPods or tablets, and, and connect with Bluetooth over Wi-Fi. This is a Sphero. I would like to share some Sphero activities with you, our board members. When we learn about polygons in preschool or kindergarten, so that's, not, so that's nothing new for us once we get in fifth grade. So it's hard for us to, to get us excited about angles, vertices, lines, and polygons. Using the spheres, we applied our geometric understanding from all the years of classroom instruction to program our robots to follow a polygon taped on the hallway floor. This was really hard. <laughs> Nobody got the program correct the first time. It was tough. We decided to work together to figure out the solutions. Group work is a huge part of using technology at Matoka because we have to share. Velocity became a reality using Sphero robots. For example, if you go too fast, you can overshoot the vertices. Simply put, if you go too fast, you can't control your robot. <laughs> Many teen drivers should practice with Spheros before they get behind the wheel, <laughs> if you know what I mean. We had no idea how much science we were using to solve a math problem. And we had to work together and use very specific vocabulary to communicate with each other. There was a lot of hand waving and giggling. The robots were not forgiving and we had many rogue robots zooming around the hallway floor. And it was hard to keep it in control. You're telling me. <laughs> in summary, we learned you can't give up. Sometimes making mistakes helps us rethink and try harder. Make sure it's not fun when you don't get something right the first time, but that doesn't mean we should give up. If we mess up the first time, you should try again. Thank, Thank you for this opportunity to present. Any questions? <laughs>